a few announcements before we get into the word. Uh, tonight, you want to make yourself available. We're going to be live streaming Pastor Caldwell from Little Rock. And just as a reminder, those services start promptly at six. So I know I've joked, but for those of us that maybe sometimes like to slip in during praise and worship, you'll miss it. So it starts right at six o'clock. And, and it's so important, you know, Pastors don't just have their pastor come and speak to us just for something to do. He always has a deposit from the Holy Spirit for this body. And uh, you, you want to honor that. You, because here's the thing. Those voices, those trusted voices, that's what God said. You stay with those trusted voices and you'll stay safe. Amen. Every time that we, we get the opportunity to hear our pastors or Pastor Caldwell, there's a safety that's there. There can be some things uh, shaking in the world. There can even be some shaking going on in your own life, but you come and you hear the man, the woman of God, and there's a safety, there's a peace that comes. And, and I, believe, I believe that for tonight, amen? Praise God. Yesterday, I just want to uh, publicly... Um, acknowledge and, and cheer and support our uh, children's ministers and volunteers that helped and put on just a wonderful trunk and treat. Yeah, give yourselves a hand. Uh, it, it was well done in quality and excellence, and I saw, I saw children from the community enjoying it, and uh, it was a wonderful outreach tool. And just to show, you know, we care about our community, and so thank you. Thank you from me. Thank you from your pastors. Uh, he, he asked me about it yesterday, and I, I sent him a text. And I, I, I listed every, every person, every trunk that, that was going uh, the, from the hot dog station to, to Shane's maze. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, that is such a wonderful report. Praise God. You know, because... Listen, I like what Pastor Morton has told our pastors. You don't have to be big to do it right. That was done right. And the kids were blessed, and, and the volunteers were blessed because of it, too. And I know my granddaughter was blessed. She came home with a, a bucket full of candy. My goodness, she, she set it on the counter. And her mama said, you want a snack? And she pointed at the, snack, snack. No, those, those aren't snacks. <laughs> those are treats. <laughs> we, have, we have a different snack for you because we want you to sleep. <laughs> Our next announcement is this coming weekend uh, from 10 to 2 at Miller Park will be our annual church picnic. And we're believing God for the same weather we had yesterday. And, and I really do believe that it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn out nice. But we need you to sign up. Uh, and there is a sign-up sheet in, in the back in the foyer. And if you haven't signed up on your way home today, maybe see a greeter and, and, and because we need to know what you're bringing. Because if everybody brings beans, you're all going to feel bad when you eat mine. And, and then, oh, that's pride. That's pride. Oh, no, no, we're not having a challenge. We're not having a challenge. No, 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 no barbecue bean cook-off. No, 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 no. But no, in, in all seriousness, we need to know what everybody's bringing so we don't have a bunch of duplicates and, you know, everybody brings silverware but nobody brings food. Yeah, that's not going to work. So, oh, we don't need silverware. Yolanda's got it covered. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so see Miss Yo, and, and she can help us uh, and direct us. And, and if, you, if you're not sure what to bring, you look at the sign-up sheet and she can help you with that as well, give you some ideas or suggestions. You know, there was always that family member, you just bring ice. <laughs> Please don't cook, just bring ice. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that's you, but if it is, ice is needful. Drinks are needful, right? Okay, moving on. I think that's all the announcements for now. But today, in the time that we have together, I want to talk about the reality of righteousness. And that's one of the biggest things, if you want to use that term, that really, really impacted me at the beginning of my uh, Christian walk. 
when I got born again was that reality that I'm righteous. And I remember, I remember at the place that I used to, to work there in Lawrence, I was trying to talk to a real religious guy about what I had been experiencing. I didn't know. I didn't know the response I was going to get, or I wouldn't have said anything. And he said, oh, well, you're just some self-righteous thing, aren't you? And he was, he was bitey about it. He wasn't just joking. He was, he was trying to get at me. And I, I just backed off. Like, I didn't know what to say. I'm not righteous in myself, and neither are you. You're righteous in Christ. If you're born again, that's one of the biggest blessings that comes from being born again is now you're right with God. None of us, before we were born again, were right with him. And I know we know that now, but again, I think I said it last weekend, don't ever lose that wonderment of your salvation. Don't ever lose the wonderment of the fact, fact, reality, you are in right standing with the creator of the universe. You're right with him because you made Jesus Lord. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And my goal is that you can take what's being taught today and you can take it and yes, please apply it to your life. Remind yourself, renew your mind every chance you get that you're right with Christ, but use it and help others. Go out of these doors and out of these four walls and tell others that if they'll just get born again or if they are born again and there seems to be some things hanging on and we'll see it from the word, they can break free from it because they're right with him. There's power in being right with God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Made righteous. It ensures that on this earth, you and I, we're completely satisfied. How do we know that? Look at Matthew chapter 5. And today we're just going to go through the word and we're going to identify ourselves. And I think the power of being able to identify who I am and who you are, now your circumstance must line up with who you are. You are not subject or obligated to do what that circumstance tells you to do. That circumstance needs to know who you are. You need to tell it what to do because you're the one in authority, but you're only in authority because you're right with God. See, don't lose the, the reality of righteousness. Matthew chapter 5. I'll start in verse 1. I'll read through verse 10, and then we'll teach a little over a couple verses. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Look at verse 6, please. And can we look at that in the Amplified if we have a chance? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Blessed and fortunate and happy and spiritually prosperous in that state in which the born-again child of God enjoys his favor and salvation are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, uprightness, and right standing. Do you see that? So you're, you're hungering and you're thirsting. But you're not hungering and thirsting for something you don't already have. You have it. 
But so you're that hunger, that thirst, that means to crave. So I'm to crave something I already have. You're not trying to attain or get something that's not already yours. You have it. The minute you got born again, and man, this impacted me the first time I heard it. The minute I got born again, the minute you got born again, you are as right with God as you'll ever be, ever. That's why I think that's one of the most supernatural things that's ever happened to any of us in here, is the minute you got born again, you became right with the Father. And it's in Christ. You couldn't do it in yourself. Listen, you tried. I know I did. I tried to be a good person, but I certainly didn't want to surrender myself to God. That wasn't going to work. When Jesus said hunger for righteousness, he didn't mean desire something you don't have. You crave something you already have. That's why you got to remind yourself of it all the time. You're craving, you're striving after God's way of being right, knowing that you're right. And that's when that man said to me, well, aren't you just self-righteous? No, sir, I used to be, but now I'm righteous in him. See, if I only would have said that, <laughs> I would have shut him up. <laughs> but that wasn't the goal. That would have been that day, but now I've grown. So <laughs> it would have been wonderful because he always had a response for everything. And if I could have just, mm. but that wouldn't have been love. That wouldn't have not been speaking the truth in love. Look at verse 10. It says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That word persecuted, it just means to pursue or suffer. There's some people that can't stand the fact you're righteous. They don't like it. They don't like the fact that you're right with God. But you know, normally it's that person, if they just make a decision, they'd be right with him too. Now, rewind back to this man I've been blasting so far. <laughs> good man. No, I just got corrected. He's not a good man. I apologize. Misguided. He didn't like the fact that I thought I was righteous because he was one to tell you, well, we're all just sinners. We're all just sinners saved by grace. Well, let me tell you, he lived that way. It was a nasty, vile, disgusting life that he was leading. And he was, he was one of the leaders in the church. But he really believed that, oh, there's none righteous. No, not, not one. And he, and he even will, I, now he didn't, but he would agree with this next verse out of its context when we go there. Listen, there's people that are just aren't going to get it. Don't worry about it. You know. You know you're in right standing. And don't argue with them. Don't shout at them. Don't try to, you know, it doesn't matter. You know what you have. Righteousness is the result of salvation. So if there's people that don't like the fact that you know that you're in right standing with God, boil it down. They don't like the fact that you're saved. I can't help them. And neither can you. You just keep living your life the way you know to live it and be the best witness you can be. You can't save them. God does. Right? Okay. Look at Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64, verse 6. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right, before Christ. Is that, I mean, is that clear enough? I was unclean. And all our righteousness, all my righteousness, all my self-righteousness, all those acts that I did within myself trying to be right, they're, they're nothing. 
They're, they are as filthy rags. And all my self-effort will fade as a leaf. All my self-effort will just take me away. But that's why it's so important you remind yourself, I'm right with God through Christ. Yeah. See, that's where, that's where when people want to say there's, there's many ways to God, wrong. That's false doctrine. There's one way, and it's through Jesus Christ. I'm not right with God if it's not for Jesus. And me and you accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. I know that's basic, and I know we know it, but there's, I don't want to put a number on it, there's a multitude that think they can just get to the Father any old way. And God is this or God is that. No, God's God. God's the Father. And Jesus is is my brother and your brother. Amen. And it's only through him that I'm right with the Father. Amen. People don't like that. They don't like that. They want to do it their way. And God said, no, you're going to do it my way. I know we've been referencing it a lot. That's honor, doing it his way, right? Don't lose the reality of that. There's a lot of Christians that aren't walking in God's best because they think this filthy rag thing applies to them. It's a mentality. They don't think they deserve God's best. Well, you know, they, I know I've already said it, but I've, I've heard it. I'm just an old sinner saved by grace, so, you know, I, I can't expect much from God. Well, your thinking's wrong. You are, listen, we talked about it last week. You're, we get that mentality and we, we flip that switch. No, I'm a new creature in Christ, in Christ in Christ. You see, Pastor Michelle has, I believe, two volumes about in Christ. I got to remind myself of that all the time, that don't ever lose the reality of who you are in Christ, because everything else is in you. But in him, that's where the true freedom is found. Amen? There's too many not you, not anybody in here that I believe, but there's too many Christians that they don't think they deserve God's best. But if you look at it, you're an heir and a joint heir with who? With Christ. And you would never say that Christ shouldn't be worthy of God's best or deserve, if you want to use that word. You qualify. I think qualify is a better word than deserve. You are qualified to receive God's best based on your relationship with him through Christ. Amen. You're right. Don't let your circumstance tell you you're not right with God. Just because something happens to you or you happen to be going through a tight spot or there's a sickness and disease maybe in your body, doesn't mean you're not right with God. The fact that you are right with God means that circumstance must change. Amen? But you have to enforce it. You qualify for God's best in your life. And don't settle for anything less than God's best. But don't get under condemnation if you're not walking in God's best. Just keep pushing. Keep pressing towards the mark. Now, God's best to you, listen, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about a mansion. I'm not talking about a Mercedes, but God's not mad if you have a Mercedes or a mansion. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about his best in your life. Amen. Those material things, there's plenty of unbelievers. There's plenty of, of sinners with mansions and Mercedes. That's not God's best. God's best for us is that we are seeking him, honoring him, loving him, a prosperous life. Does that make sense? Okay. And you want a Mercedes, go for it. But don't get it, don't get it flipped. All right. Look at Philippians chapter 3.
Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. This is Paul. He says, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. He's saying he wants genuine righteousness, truly right standing, right? Genuine righteousness won't allow you, it won't allow me to be inferior in any spiritual area. God will not leave us at a deficit. Now, I know we say that a lot about our finances, and that's true, but that's in any spiritual area. We are not at a deficit because we are, when we seek after and aim after that true righteousness, do you see that? Do you think God's going to allow you to be inferior in any spiritual area? If you're seeking him, what did he say? Seek me, you'll find me. Knock, it'll be open, right? Because, but if you don't know you're right, you won't knock. Amen. You And we'll get into this. You won't knock with any boldness. Listen, you've all had people bold knock on your door. You let them in, whether you want to or not at times. But you've had, I've done it. You've heard. They won't know I'm home. Like these, the salesman. How's the sheriff? Don't answer. How do you suppose the sheriff might knock on your door if they really wanted to talk to you? That's right. You don't answer, they're coming in. <laughs> You've all seen it. Douglas County Sheriff, boom. They're coming in. They announce themselves. Listen, you got to be bold. And the only way you're going to be bold is that you know you're right. You're going to go to him. You're going to pray. You're going to ask. You're going to seek because you know you're right, and you know he's going to hear you because you're in right standing with him. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. And we'll look at verse 3. And we're going to read down through verse 13. But as we read through here, and we're going to teach through here, there's nine things that God wants to do for us. But without my mind being renewed to the fact that I'm right with him, I'm going to have a hard time walking in them. Just because God wants to do something for you doesn't mean you'll walk in it. You got to renew your mind to the fact that he wants to do it for you. You qualify for it. You're good enough for it. See, that's this whole, this whole thing in, in identification your past cannot identify you. None of us. Nobody's past in here. You were not qualified in your past. Amen. Your past is your past, and I understand that, but you're brand new. If you're born again in here, you're brand new, and you qualify for all of it. It's all yours for the taking. Okay? Look at, look at here, verse 3. Blessed, he blessed us. He blessed us. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So he's prospered us. Verse 4, according as he has chosen us. You've been chosen. You're chosen. That's why, listen, I know, I know some of us, in our past, maybe you felt like you were rejected. Maybe you felt like you've not been chosen for anything. He said he's chosen you. And he chose you before the foundation of the world. He's chose you. But you got to renew your mind to the fact, okay, I'm right with him. He chose me. Before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That's a positional truth. You are holy and without blame before God. But you got to renew your mind to that. Don't let, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Well, can you believe? I, see, I know good and well 
that you did that the other day or you said this. And you know what? If you did, own it. Yep, sure did. But I asked the one that I'm in right standing with to forgive me. So he forgave me. So I'm moving on. You want to hold on to it? Go ahead. I can't, I can't change that. But I asked him, the one that I'm in right standing with, to forgive me. And not only did he forgive me, he forgot about it. He won't ever bring it up again. You might. He won't. So guess what? If he won't, please don't bring it up to him. There's no point. Don't bring up things to him that he's forgotten. Okay? You're, it's, it's a waste of time and energy. Verse 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. He's predestined us. Now, I'm not talking about predestination in that predestined to fail and some some are going to fail and some are going to no it says you've been predestined to him and if you've been predestined to him to the father through Christ that's a good path that's a good path there is no evil on that predestinated path does that make sense Verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. Maybe in your life you were never accepted, you never felt accepted. Maybe you felt like a social outcast. Guess what? Doesn't matter. God said, I've accepted you. And you're accepted in the beloved. He loves you. Doesn't matter what society might try to say about you. What did he say? You've been accepted. Verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. You've been redeemed. Now, I will tell you, that's why I told that little story before and I called myself out about not knowing the curse of the law. See, I really enjoy Deuteronomy 28 up until a point. <laughs> but you need to know all those things that you're redeemed from. Yes, you're redeemed. What are you redeemed from? I encourage you, go find out. And as you read it, read it with the understanding, okay, God allowed this to happen. God allowed this disease. God allowed this plague. But as you're reading it and as you're feeding your spirit, say out loud, I did this morning. I'm redeemed from that. I'm redeemed from that. I, it's, it, it'll build your faith and you'll start shouting because no, I see it here, but I'm redeemed from it Amen. because of what Jesus did. I'm in right standing because of what Jesus did, and therefore I'm redeemed from all that junk. So if it tries to come on me, and it even gets on me, I'm still redeemed from it. And it's got to go. Okay. Verse 8, wherein he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. That's why you always know what to do. He has abounded toward you in all wisdom. But you got to renew your mind to that. Verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. So he's made known unto us the mystery of his will. I know his will for my life because I'm in right standing with him. Others that aren't right with him, they can never know what, they, what they're supposed to do. It's a fruitless life, not knowing what God wants you to do. But don't ever say, well, I don't know what God wants me to do. Yes, you do. He, having made known unto us the mystery, take that, listen, you're in right standing with him. Go boldly and take that scripture to him and say, God, I'm having a hard time seeing what you want me to do, but I know you've made known the mystery of your will for my life. So thank you for showing me. That's how this works. And believe that he'll show you. Okay. Verse 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, 
being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. He gave us an inheritance. You got to go pick it up. You got to go get it. I have to go get it. Just because you've been given an inheritance, you got to go sign for it. Bring your identity. Listen, there is no inheritance in the natural that you can go down, that you can go get without your ID. You got to go pick this up with your ID, and your ID is righteous in Christ. It's all yours. It's all yours. It belongs to you. Go get it. There is nothing, there is nothing in this lifetime, right now on this earth, that we should be in need of. Amen. Notice I didn't say that need won't try to encroach. But you and I, we are heirs. Enforce that. Pull out your identification. Remind yourself and remind the situation, no, this is who I am. This is what's mine. And this is what I expect. You are an ambassador for Christ. That's what the Bible says. Ambassadors get what they want. Amen. Now, you need to ask, and you need to be reverent, and you need to honor, but ask. Don't, don't tolerate. Ambassadors in the natural don't tolerate. I don't believe they tolerate. They say, no, I need this. Okay, they get it because they're ambassadors for that country. You are ambassadors for Christ Jesus. Amen. Enforce your authority. And verse 13. In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So he sealed us. Okay, you've been blessed, you've been chosen, you've been predestined, you've been accepted, you've been redeemed, you've, he abounds toward you, he's made his will known to you, he gave you an inheritance, and he sealed you. That's what God wants to do for us and continue to do for us every day. But I gotta have a righteousness mindset or I'm not gonna walk in this consistently. I wanna walk in this consistently. I need this functioning in my life every day. But I have to know I'm right with God. Say, I'm right with God. I'm right with God. Amen. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Boldness means all outspokenness, confidence, and assurance. You won't come to God boldly unless you have a righteousness mindset. I know I'm going to use this example it, because I think everybody has, you can see it, it's, it's, it's easily uh, accessed. Your kids are bold when they open the refrigerator. They just I <laughs> see, yes. You know why? Because they know they're right with you. Even if they've messed up, they still know they can go to the refrigerator. You may have corrected them just five minutes ago. That they're not, oh, can I have a glass of water? What are you asking? Go, 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 go. Go get what you need, Right? I have gone, just even recently, to see my parents. I didn't ask if I should, could get in the cupboard, get some chips, get in the refrigerator, because if I, my mom would have just laughed at me. Like, well, you don't have to ask me. Go bold. Go bold. You're right with him. You're his child. He loves you. He wants you to have everything that he has. He's not withholding anything from us. He wants you to have it. But you got to go get it. Amen. 
I'm hungry, so I'm going to talk about food. <laughs> and if you hear my stomach, I apologize. <laughs> I didn't eat enough for breakfast. That's my fault. I didn't go boldly into the kitchen and get enough to eat. If there was a lasagna, <laughs> and it was sitting on your kitchen table, and somebody made it for you, somebody you trust, not the relative to bring ice, but the, somebody you trust, and you know it's good. You've had it before. You know you've watched them prepare it. You've seen them prepare it for, for other people. You've watched other people eat it. In fact, you've, you've, even, you've even tasted it and had it last week. They come in and they put it on your table. I mean, it's, it's bubbly. You know when you, when you pull the foil back and the cheese is, is bubbling around the side? Oh, my goodness. And it can sit there, and it's, it's starting to, you know, as it rests for a few minutes, and the kitchen starts to smell it, and, and now when you cut it, it doesn't all fall apart and it stays together because you were patient. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> and you cut it, and you look at the layers, and you have, you know, the cheese and the vegetables and the meat, and the, I mean, it's, it looks like it should be on a magazine. You know it's going to taste good. And again, you know where I'm going with this. You don't go and get it. You don't eat it. That's on you. It was prepared for you. It was brought to you. It was put in your home. The, t the foil was, was pulled back. The person cut it, put it on a plate, said, hey, I got to go. But it's yours. And you don't go get it? That's on you. And they'll come back, hey, did you enjoy that lasagna? Because they, listen, a good cook gets pleasure in knowing that you're enjoying what they made for you, what they prepared for you but you didn't eat it? They're going to go, what are you doing? I spent all that time for you. Listen, go boldly. Come to him. Why? So that you can obtain, obtain mercy, find grace, find help. You've been redeemed. You've been sealed. You've been given an inheritance. Go get it. It's all right there on your counter. Go boldly and get it. Your hand's not going to get slapped if you reach. Listen, there's not going to be some sibling that says, no, that's mine, and hits you. No, it's yours. God's got enough for everybody. Amen. Amen? But if you don't know who you are in Christ, if you don't think, listen, if you think because you messed up last week that you got out of right standing with him, wrong. Your righteousness is not so much about your conduct, it's about your position. You're right. That's your position. Now, if you mess up, should you repent and ask for him to forgive you? Yes, of course, you need to. That's what the word says. But don't think that you got to be perfect. No, you don't need to be perfect. You're not going to do everything right, but you can be bold in everything you do. You'll only be bold if you think you're holy and if you think you're right. And holy only means you're set apart. God set you apart. The moment you got born again, you were set apart for him and you were made right with him through Christ. Remind yourself of that every day. Listen, if we'll keep ourselves in that position and that mindset, we'll stay in a victorious position. Listen, I know the Bible says that we're overcomers. I understand that and I fully believe that. But I got to keep myself here. I got to remind myself of that. Just because, because if I don't remind myself of it, I won't act like it. I won't act like an overcomer. I won't act like I have the victory. I won't take those steps that I know I need to take because I'll be in my mind thinking, well, I know the Bible says, but no, hold on. The Bible says and put it here. Get, the mental ascent thing, we got to move past. We got we to gotta grow past that. We talked about some of that Wednesday. We're growing past some things. We're maturing past some things. We're moving from, it sure would be nice to know I have it now. I receive it now. 
I take it now. I receive my inheritance right now. Well, it sure would be nice if God would. God has. God has. So I take it, I receive it, it's mine. But I'm only going to do that if I'm bold and I believe that I'm right with him. Does that make sense? Well, I believe God has said what he wanted to say about righteousness today. I do want to make it available. Um, any, any Sunday morning when we're together, I'd li- I like to make the uh, availability of salvation to those that would desire, uh, if not in this room, but also online. So right now, if, if you're online, if you're joining us and you say, you know, I've never made Jesus the Lord of my life, I sure would like to be right with God. We can do that right now. And I'd like you to say this prayer with me as I lead those online in the prayer of salvation. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart right now. And Jesus, I thank you for forgiving me of my sins. And I choose to make you the Lord of my life. And I choose right now to receive your righteousness. And my life will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you said that prayer in here with us or online, we believe you're born again. And we would love to hear from you. You can drop us a line at main at buildfaith.net and we'll get you some information, and we just want to help you with your walk with Christ. Amen? Well, praise God. Thank you so much for your time and your attention today. If you want to stand to your feet, we'll say our vision this morning. Just a reminder, Pastor Caldwell will be with us on the big screen tonight, and uh, I believe God will have some wonderful things to say to us. Say it with me. The vision of our church will always be to build people's faith and frame their world by the word of God. And you and I will always be world changers. God bless you. Hey, thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We're so blessed that you've joined us for this faith building message. Do me a favor, take a moment and hit the like, subscribe and notification bell so you can receive our future uploads to this channel. We're committed to building your faith and framing your world by the Word of God. For more information, go to our website at buildfaith.net.